Okay, now question number three from October 2018, M1. Um, at time t equals zero, a stone is thrown vertically up with the speed of 19.6 meters per second from a point A, which is h meters above horizontal ground. At time t equals three seconds, another stone is released from rest at point B, which is also h meters above the same horizontal ground. Both stones hit the ground at time t equals t seconds. The motion of each stone is modeled as that of a particle moving freely under gravity. For first of all, find the value of t and the value of h. Okay, so now, this question we have basically two particles which are thrown, or stones which are thrown. One of them is thrown upwards. They're both, um, you know, released or thrown from the same place or the same level above the horizontal ground. So let me take that as a horizontal ground. And let me take that as a level from which they're thrown. I'll put A on this side and B on this side. Try and make it horizontal. It's just a sketch. Okay, so here we have both of them are the same level above the horizontal ground. So they're both at the same level of h above the horizontal ground. Okay, so that's the distance above the ground. This one, its initial um, thing is it's, it's thrown up vertically upwards with a speed of 19.6 meters per second. And this one, it was just released from rest, so its initial, its initial movement was going to be down. It's going to go, it's going to head down first. Okay, and it's going to start off with a speed of zero downwards because it's just released. It's not thrown up or thrown down, just released. So its initial speed will be zero meters per second. Okay, okay, so supposing that this hits the ground, so this is when t equals zero, it's released. Okay, and this is released three seconds later. Okay, this is released three seconds later. Okay, so this is released when t is equal to three. Okay, now supposing this one hits the ground, well we know that they, this hits the ground after when t is equal to t seconds. Now for this one the time that it's been in the air is three seconds less than this one. This was thrown first, okay, and this was dropped three seconds later it started its journey. Okay, so this has been in the air three seconds less than this. So we could say this is t equals the time that this hits the ground minus three seconds. The amount of time that's been in the air, okay, is three seconds less than this. So what our t here is going to be is the amount of time that it spent, you know, from when it was thrown to where it hit the ground. So although they both hit the side, they hit the ground at t seconds, okay, this has taken um, three seconds less, okay, than t to hit the ground because it was thrown three seconds later. So if we now take our SUVAT equations, I'll do, f this is for particle A and this is for particle B. Okay, we got, for this S is now, what I'm going to do is, for the first particle, I'm going to take up as positive. For the second particle, I'm going to take down as positive. All right, the reason being the first particle was thrown upwards, so I'll take up as positive. And H is below the ground, it's H meters below the ground in the downward direction, so my H in this case, the displacement s is minus h. Now don't take s as the distance is traveled up and then down. s does not represent the distance traveled. It represents the displacement, how far it is away from its initial position. And it's h meters away or below its initial position as we've taken up as positive, its displacement is minus h. Okay, there's a distance between distance and displacement. Distance is the ground covered, whereas di displacement is its position or it's the distance away from its initial position from the start. Okay, so you've got SUVAT, so S-U-V-A-T. Okay, so the initial speed here is 19.6, which would be positive, because I've taken up as positive. That's 19.6 meters per second. The final speed, we don't really need it. The acceleration, now I'm taking up, up as positive, and of course this, these are falling freely under gravity, so it's going to be minus G, minus 9.8, and T, here is our capital T that they told us the time when it hit the ground. For part, part, particle B, as it's being released and its initial speed is down, its initial direction is going to go down, I'm taking down as positive. In that case, S is equal to positive H. And U is equal to zero. 
and V we don't really need. And A is, this time it's going to be positive G. Why? Because it's going down and down. I've taken as positive. And acceleration is accelerating down towards the ground. And in this case, the T is three seconds less than um, that's been in the air. So it's T minus three. If this was in the air T seconds, this was in the air T minus three seconds. Three seconds less. Okay. So now, let's look at what equation I can use. It looks like we've got S, U, A, and T. Looks like we're going to use for both of these S equals U, T plus a half a t squared. So let's look at a first. We've got minus h is equal to 19.6 times t, okay, plus a half times, well, let's take that as g is 9.8, so minus 9.8 times capital T squared. And that's for a. And for b, we're going to have, um, we're going to have s is positive h this time equals ut, u is zero, so that becomes, the whole term becomes zero, plus a half times a, which is positive 9.8, taken down as positive, times t minus three squared. Okay, so let me make a division between these just so I can, all right, <clears throat> so we have minus h, whoops, we have minus h, sorry about that, equals 19.6 t minus 4.9 t squared. So that's one equation. The other equation, we have h is equal to, that's going to be 4.9. There's supposed to be a squared there. What did I put cute? Okay, you're going to have 4.9 times t squared minus 6t plus 9. So here you'll have h equals 4.9 t squared minus 6 times 4.9. 6 times 4.9, which gives us 147, uh, which gives us 29.4. 29.4 t plus 9 times 4.9, which gives us 44.1. So now, this is minus h and this is plus h, so I can basically uh, use these two equations together to solve. So if minus h equals this, then h is going to be 4.9 t squared minus 19.6 t. So I can now make them equal to each other. They're both expressed in terms of h. So I have 4.9 t squared minus 19.6 t is equal to 4.9 t squared minus 29.4 t plus 44.1. Uh, the 4.9 t squared will cancel out. I'm left with this will be uh, 29.4 t minus 19.6 t equals 44.1. So let's see what that gives us. 29.4. 29.4. Minus 19.6. That gives you 9.8. So you have 9.8 t equals 44.1. So t is 44.1 divided by 9.8, which will give us divided by 9.8, which gives us 4.5 seconds. So t is 4.5 seconds. Okay, so that's the answer to part one, which was to find the value of t. And once we found the value of t, we can find the value of h because we know h in terms of t, uh, which is an easy equation for us to use. Um, I guess it's this one. Yeah, you can use either of them. This is probably easier. So we know what t is. t is 4.5. So we, we can replace 4.5 into this equation. So we've got 4 point, h equals 4.9 t squared minus 19.6 t. So h equals 4.9 t squared, 4.9 t squared minus, so I forgot, minus 19.6 t. And we know that t is equal to 4.5 seconds. This is part two. 
Okay, so h is equal to 4.9 times 4.5 squared minus 19.6 times 4.5. <clears throat> so 4.9 times 4.5 squared minus 19.6 times 4.5. That gives you 11.025. 11.025. Meters, so you could write that as 11 meters to 2SF because we used G or 11.0. 11, 11 is perfectly fine because we used 2SF because uh, we used G in, in this calculation as 9.8, which we asked to do. So, this question you've got to be really careful about your directions and your signs that will mess you up here. So, I always follow the same convention when I'm doing mechanics questions the direction in which something is initially moving, I take as positive. All right. So that's why I took this one as positive for A, up as positive for A, and I took down as positive for B. And the other thing you've got to be important, very, very careful about is the meaning of S in the SUVAC equations. S does not mean the distance traveled. S means the displacement. So the sign is very important, and the fact that it's only how far away it is from its initial position that you're considering, not the total distance it's moved before it got there. That's where people really trip up in these type of questions. Okay, and um, the other thing is about the time. You've got to be clear about how to work, work out. This T here, T does not represent in the equation the time. It represents how long the thing has been under the, the, this, you know, um, movement. So this, for the first one, it's, if we call T equals T, this, this is at T equals zero, this was thrown. So T is equals capital T is when it hits the ground. This one was thrown three seconds later. So it's been in the ground for the amount of time that this has been in the, uh, this, sorry, it's been in the air for the same time about that this has been in the air except three seconds less. Three seconds less than this has been in, in the air. So that's why I put T minus three. Okay, T represents the time that this was in the air. All right, so this has been in the air three seconds less than this. Okay, even though they hit the ground at the same time, the time it's been in the air is T, is T minus three. The T doesn't represent... This, this little t here does not represent the, the actual time that it hit the ground in terms of what time it is. It represents how, f what was the um, length of time for which it was in the, in the air, undergoing this, you know, movement. Okay, so that's, those are some of the important points that you need to realize when answering a question like this.